good afternoon. Welcome. Today I'm going to be running through how I make boned, rolled and stuffed rotisserie pork belly. Excuse the chicken Phoebe wading in with her views. Um, I'm going to go through the recipe with you, how to cook it, and I'm going to register it on my web. First thing to do is to light the fire, so let's get cracking. I use a whole chimney starter because it's a big piece of meat and it's going to take two plus hours to hit core temperature of between 67 and 70 degrees Celsius, which is when I'll next ready. So let's get the barbecue lit, then let's get inside and prep the meat. So what I have is a piece of pork belly, a large two kilogram piece of pork belly that I've bought from my local butcher Davies and Sons. Deck kindly takes the ribs out, don't get those chucked away, take those, you can cook those alongside as a chef's treat. And he has butterfly it for me so that it's much easier to stuff and roll. And he also scored the crackling. Always ask your butcher to do that. Their knives are much sharper than anything you're gonna ever have at home. It'll be much easier for them to do than it is for you. So the two elements to this recipe, one is the stuffing and the other is the rub, which goes inside and outside the belly. The inside stuffing is going to be prunes and wild garlic that I've picked yesterday, I think, yes, no, Saturday even. And there's one of the other animals, Nero, our cat, letting us know what she thinks. And uh, also Bev's magical spice mixture, which includes juniper berries, pink peppercorns, and some other things. I'll put a link to her recipe in the comments. And then the rub is paprika, celery salt, oregano, black pepper, and sea salt. The olive oil is to rub into the skin uh, of the meat before I start cooking it. So the ingredients for the rub, based on a two to three kilogram pork belly, are four teaspoons of granulated sugar. I'm putting them into a pestle, so, and so that a pestle, you're gonna use a pestle and mortar to grind everything up. So four teaspoons of sugar. Two teaspoons of paprika. As you can see, we use a lot of paprika in this house. Two teaspoons of dried oregano. So that's then two teaspoons of dried oregano. One teaspoon of celery salt. And this rub is taken from the Weber website. Um, it's a very good rub. I use it a lot. And it works on all sorts of ingredients. Then just a bit of pepper, coarse pepper and some sea salt. And then grind it all up. And now it looks like that. I've roughly chopped prunes, which I'm now going to be adding to the pork. But first I'm going to spread some of the rub on the inside, as discussed. You won't be able to get a piece of meat like this from a supermarket, simply because pork belly in supermarkets is tiny and off cuts essentially. So do buy meat at your local butcher, the quality will be better, the price will be better, everything will be better. Right, there's the rub onto the meat. Now I'm going to start putting the prunes in.
rough is fine, doesn't really matter how they're going. It's about two handfuls of prunes. Now a few turns of spice mix. Which isn't coming up really well. There we go. Another wild garlic leaves, which I've washed. And when you're picking wild garlic, always be careful not to pick leaves right by a path where dogs or other animals could be walking and urinating for obvious reasons. So we just keep going with the leaves. I pull the stems off if there are any left over because I don't want tough bits of anything in this dish. So there we go. And now I'm ready to do some more here. So it's layer upon layer of stuffing and meat and rub and flavorings. that. Now we're ready to roll this piece of pork and get it ready for the rotisserie. Now we're going to roll the pork and then pop it onto the skewer. I use a four pronged fork to hold the meat in place on the rotisserie. Weber supplies a two pronged fork which isn't as effective for obvious reasons. You want the four prong they're all standard but i'll pop a link to amazon where i got these um i've had them for three years now really good um and i highly recommend them anyway so we'll start off i'm going to cheat because what i don't want is roll the pork then push this through and destroy all the stuffing that i've got inside so turn everything sideways move the piece of meat across Pop that there. And then roll. Now I'm gonna roughly tie this before moving on to properly tying it up when I've turned it over with butcher's tie. This is just to hold it in place for a minute while I turn it over. There we go. Now I can turn it over without everything falling out. I can try and show you as slowly as I can how I do a butcher's knot, tying the meat. Run the string underneath the meat, pull it taut. In my right hand, I hold the one like that, and the other one over, under, back up and through like that, and then pull down. And you'll hear the, the string kind of makes a click noise. It's done. And then I tie another knot. And it's done. So I've removed my loose piece of string that was just to hold it so I could flip it over. I'm going to try and show this to you again slowly. Hold the string like that on your hand, like so. Hold it over there. And around, bring that through. Oh, okay. Like so. And then just pull on one side and it'll tighten. And then another knot. And slip. And there we go. It's ready for the barbecue. I did a few more just to be sure. I don't want bits falling out. Now I'm going to attach 
the forks. Have to move this down a bit. Pop the other one on the other end. And you'll see they don't all go in, but they will support the meat. The four forks there. Now that I've done that, fun thing, give it a spray, with just olive oil, massage that in. My gloves are looking the worst for wear. Just to keep the meat, the meat moist, I'm going to get the gloves off. And the final thing I'm going to do is put a last little bit of rub on the outside, not too much. Flavours on the inside, and I want the pork to crackle up, be lovely, and crack the crackling to be lovely. I don't want to have too much rub on there, just a little bit. And one last thing, almost forgot, is a few turns of sea salt onto the pork. And now we're ready to go. Okay, the coals are ready. Now we're going to tip the next part from the chimney starter. I have an old trusty pair of gloves from Weber that protect your hands from extreme heat. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So I'm putting it about half each side. One of the coals, two in fact, fell into the fire. I'm able to pick them up with my hands and put them in. And that's why I would highly recommend getting these gloves. These are about eight years old and they still work perfectly. Now we're going to pop the British three on. That's the first part. And now we're going to pop the lid on, get everything done. And then in a minute we'll put the meat on. The barbecue's been standing there for about 10 minutes. What I'm doing is I'm letting the dome and the side attachment for the rotisserie warm up basically, because you want to cook everything like this is an oven. Although it's a rotisserie, the Weber operates like an oven, so you want everything to be up to temperature before you add the meat. So, take the lid off. I'm going to add two drip trays, and I'm just using old takeaway trays that I use over and over and over. I fill them with a bit of water, pop them in the middle, so they're going to catch any fat drips from the piece of pork as it cooks, and stop any flare-ups as well so that the fat doesn't accumulate down at the bottom. I'll show you what that looks like. If I can get the camera to work. With the tripod, so it looks like that. Now I'm going to pop the meat in. It's an electric rotisserie. Now make sure that it's lined up with both the charcoal and that it's centered in the barbecue, as you can see. So I've made sure that the piece of pork, whatever meat you're rotisserie, needs to be centered so that the heat from either side is going to get to it. And now I'm going to test that it's all balanced and it will turn by turning on the motor. The one thing I would say that is a pain with Weber rotisseries is the cable is hardly long enough to reach the floor. I know, and they're not cheap. Right, here we go. 
what we want to see is that the meat turns around without anything falling out and that it's all lined up and that appears to be the case so now I'll pop the lid on and see you in a couple of hours it's just over an hour since the pork went in you can have a quick look see what it looks like not too bad I think an hour to go check the internal temperature in about 45 minutes see how we do so we've been cooking for almost two hours now not too bad I'm going to check the internal temperature to make sure it's above 70 degrees and stop Use my trusty old and we're above 70, so that's good. I'm going to leave it going for a little bit more to try and get the crackling up a bit. Yep, it's looking good. Okay. Not too shabby, is it? Get this off, get the string off, and let rest for a while. Okay, I've brought it inside. Now I'm gonna get it off the skewer, off the rotisserie even. Skewer, what? So I only need one end to come off, as you can see. You don't want to be touching anything. It's roasting hot. So use gloves or a tea towel like I'm doing. The next thing you want to be doing, it's very important, is cutting the string that's been holding the meat in place so that while it's resting, the meat's relaxing and not tensing up with the string. So we cut through all the strings now. Okay, we took all the string that the pork is tied up with off to let the meat relax, and now, as you can hear, we have crackling, we have pork, so let's see what it looks like in the middle. I think we're good to go. And there you have it, pork belly, rotisserie, stuffed with prunes, wild garlic, all sorts of other wonderful things, served with a homegrown salad. Homegrown salad leaves, home sprouted mung beans, homegrown microgreens and pea shoots, also homegrown. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed that, please like and subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.